Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Locker Room. I'm your host, Tommy Tellerino, and alongside me today is my amazing co-host, Jordan Navarro. It's been too long since our last episode, I will say, but we've had some great things happen since then, such as the new Drake album. Jordan, how are we feeling about it? I'm feeling absolutely amazing about it. Um, you know, huge Drake fan, finally put out some decent music. So we're living life, man. Coming off of our bye week, you know, living life. Yeah, we had our bye week last week. You know, we are a little busy. Um, Jordan had some stuff to do. I had some stuff to do with school. So we took the week off. Hey, the NFL gets a bye week. We get a bye week, too. It happens. But uh, how you been? Good, good. That's what we like to hear. But last night, we had ourselves a game. Probably not even the worst Thursday night football game of the year, shockingly. We saw... Depends on what team you rooted for. True. But going into the year, this probably looked like the worst. Oh, absolutely. And then we saw Denver versus Indianapolis. And then Russ cooked. Yeah, he... He cooked all night long, cooking up that NyQuil chicken. But P.J. Walker was kind of cooking up that NyQuil chicken, but he gets the win for Carolina. Uh, it was a 25-15 to 15 final in Carolina. Uh, Atlanta looked like Atlanta, really. Mariota, 186 yards, um, two touchdowns, one interception, uh, five sacks on the night. 43 rushing yards. And then Kyle Pitts had himself a Kyle Pitts game. Two catches, 28 yards, eight targets. Drake London got in there, five catches, 38 yards, six targets. I mean, this is this is just pitiful. What What is going on in Atlanta? Drake London and Cadell Hodge caught the touchdowns for Marcus Mariota. Um, yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the nose. It's pitiful. Tommy, I don't know how much of the game you actually watched last night, like, continuously. I don't know if anyone watched the game continuously. They probably just tuned in when their fantasy players were on the field. Um, Marcus Mariota ain't it. He's he's awful at football. Um, he can't play the quarterback position. And they probably need to just bring in Desmond Ritter. Like, yeah. you're not going anywhere. You're four and six, right? Even if you somehow managed to win this division because Tampa Bay is just incapable of doing anything. Which they really haven't shown that they are, but that's besides the point. They're a better team in Atlanta across the board. What's the point? You're not beating anyone in the playoffs. Not not even close. So, it's time to punt. It's time to put Desmond Ritter in, see what he can do. Because I saw Marcus Mariota look awful, and I've seen him look awful continuously. I mean, it is, it's sad at this point. He threw the ball 30 times, had 186 yards. And half of these targets to Kyle Pitts aren't even catchable, man. It, it's a shock that he had eight targets, actually. That's probably got him involved that much. Yeah, probably. I mean, this is just pitiful. It's pitiful. Uh, there's just, there's no flow in this offense. Because if the, if the run game ain't working, the offense ain't working. Because you saw Cordell Patterson got shut down. Well, I was just about to Caleb say. Huntley, Caleb Huntley run, uh, ripped off a, a decent run or two. But, I mean, if if the run game isn't there, there is no way for Atlanta yeah. to move the ball. There was like four or five different backs at one point in this game for Atlanta, and none of them could get it going. I mean, Mariota was one of – I think he might have been the leading rusher. Yeah, which is, he, he had 43 yards. Yeah. I mean – it it's very sad because you know we're just wasting away Kyle Pitts and I think I don't think Ritter will be worse than Kenny Pickett, worse than Mariota, or worse than Malik Willis, who we've all seen this year start. And even if he is, who cares? Yeah, you didn't go get I a mean, higher pick. Exactly. It just I, doesn't I don't make understand sense. why they. It looks like they're trying to compete when this team is not a piece away or two pieces away or even three pieces away. I mean they're. They're still in the middle of a, a pretty hefty rebuild, I would say, at least on the back end of their defense. And, and, you know, even in the trenches, I'm not in love with their offensive line. I think it's okay. 
But I mean, Cordell Patterson, is he really someone you're going to build around? He's 31, you know, on 32, you know, he's not. You got Kyle Pitts and Drake London. That's it. That's all you have on this offense. Whether they want to admit it or not, Tyler, uh, Tyler Algier, I think he's okay. I think he's a, a plod and trot running back. I don't think he's explosive. I don't think you're going to, you know, go into next season saying, all right, he's the guy. They're going to bring in somebody. And honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if Bijan Robinson was there. I wouldn't be shocked if they took him because Arthur Smith wants to run the ball. So you might as well give him the best running back in in the draft, right? I I think Algeri, I think you got to hand over the reins a little bit more. I know Patterson was out, and he probably is the better back at this point. But are you really going to have Cordell Patterson in your future, like we said? Is it is it worth it? And if I was Patterson, well, I mean, I'd leave. He could go into a, a playoff team, become a receiving back, and he'd thrive there. I mean, you might as well run him into the ground, I guess, if you got him. No reason to put the miles on the on the young guy's leg, you know. But it, it's it's a mess. And on the Carolina Panthers side. I mean, people are going to talk about the pass game and how P.J. Walker only had 108 yards. He didn't have to do anything else. Yeah. They couldn't stop Dante Foreman I, at all. <laughs> 31 carries, 130 yards, one touchdown. I mean, they I mean, they just ran him into the ground. That's He was that's very efficient. He looked, yeah. he looked really good. He's a hard runner. Uh, Dante Foreman, you know, their run game got better after they traded Christian McCaffrey. I don't know how that works, but uh, – Steve Wilkes did something. Uh, it's it's the whole new coaching change. That's why I, I'm honestly convinced Matt Rule's just that bad. It's like Urban Meyer's down here. Matt Rule's like probably right there. Uh, yeah, just was probably not from. wrong. And then you know DJ Moore's kind of getting freed a little bit. We see him getting involved a little more and more, which is amazing. Um. I thought he was going to be gone at the deadline. I really was. Uh, he's staying. I think he wishes he was gone at the deadline, too. But um, it is what it is. Uh, they Their defense played great in this game. Um, J.C. Horn came up with an interception. Frankie LeVue, two sacks. The, there's still some solid pieces on this defense for Carolina. Yeah, I actually like this defense a lot. I think there are a couple uh, – solid free agencies and maybe a draft away from having a really, really, really good defense because Brian Burns is a beast. I really like Matthew Ioannidis. I like their corners. You know, it's a solid defense. It's an underrated defense for sure. Yeah, we saw last year J.C. Horn got drafted, and he kind of, he got injured early in the season last year. He's stepping up now for this Carolina defense, and he's, he, he's right behind Patrick Sertain in that cornerback group for last year. I think he's doing a yeah. great job. I think this is just such a weird division. It really is. They've turned to the NFC East. They're just honestly assuming Brady retires. Kara, I mean, they're a quarterback away from making a run at a divisional title, right? Like let's be honest. If Tom Brady retires, Tampa Bay is going to be terrible. Kyle Trask terrible. is not the answer. <laughs> They're going to be awful unless they yeah. pull off some trade for Aaron Rodgers or something. But, I mean, if you can't do anything with Tom Brady right now, you know what are you going to do with Aaron Rodgers, right? Yeah. Um. But yeah, this division is going to be a mess for for a while. And um, anything else you want to add for the Carolina game? No. Because we'll stick right with that division. You know, Seattle, Tampa Bay, that's a first or second game of the week. It's in uh, Germany this week, 930 game. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'd get up and watch this. I don't know if this is a must-see game. but nah, I, It's cool that it's the first game in Germany, you know. Yeah. Uh, outside of the novelty, I don't really want to watch either of these teams play. I mean, no. I'm not a Seattle fan. I wish they would stop winning. That would help my 49ers a lot. But Who would have thought, though, coming into it's week 10 now, Geno Smith has more passing touchdowns than Tom Brady. 
Tom Brady throws the ball 60 times a game and barely gets 300 yeah. yards. I mean, this offense is atrocious. I, I was just watching, like, that game last week against the Rams. At both offenses just looked terrible. But the amount of non-catchable passes, plus the amount of drop passes that I saw in this game, there, it's just – this is not a Tampa Bay team that we've seen the past couple of years. And I, you know, okay. we kept saying, oh, we, we just got to give it time. There is no more time. It's, yeah. I mean, I think they'll, I think they'll win the division by default just because they're the best team, the best quarterback. Um, but with the way they've played, I'm not, I don't like their chances of making a playoff run at all. I mean, Going into the year, we knew the offensive line, they had some big injuries that they knew going in, I think even before preseason, that, okay, we need to we need to fix these holes. The holes weren't yeah. fixed, and they added more holes on the defense. <laughs> Everyone is hurt on this team, basically. And they, you know, the defense is stepping up. They're, they're the ninth-ranked defense in the league. But the offense is 19th in the league. At some point, there's just you got to put the blame on this offensive game and realize Tom Brady's not once what he was. He's not. Yeah, and uh, he's playing the worst he's maybe played in yeah. his career, um, which is you know not bad. I'm not saying it's a bad. I mean, you look at his stats; he's not actually yeah. playing that terrible in terms of how much he's being asked to pass. But their run game is non-existent. They can't run the ball. There is no yeah. threat. And Leonard Fournette and Rashad White, because this offensive line is so atrocious, they they can't run. And that's where you know Brady. A lot of those years in New England, he had a strong run game where they can work the play action in. Play action is not really working here in Tampa. So Brady on the year, you know, I think he's leading the league in uh, passing yards. He's got around uh, twenty five hundred, ten touchdowns and one interception. He's efficient on not turning the ball over. But this team's not scoring at all in the red zone or out of the red zone. They're kicking field yep. goals. That's it. You, yep. you don't win games kicking field goals. It, just, well, it ain't going to happen. This is an in-depth breakdown of the Tampa Bay offense. Yes. And you know, with all what we said, I'm taking Seattle in this game yeah. because of um, everything we just said. I'm, I'm also taking Seattle just because, you know, uh, the Pete Carroll system just works so good for some of these quarterbacks. You know, Geno Smith is thriving. Uh, Kenneth Walker has looked dominant. He's a yeah, strong Kenan runner. Is a dog. He's yeah, a he, dog. he got that dog in him. And then Tyler Lockett, we thought it was going to be one of his worst years since Russell Wilson's gone. He's putting up around the same numbers. He's got four touchdowns, been, almost 600 been yards. much more consistent, much yeah. more consistent. He's being used as more of an underneath guy. I think that suits him more. He can still take the top off the defense, but, you know. Uh, this should, I actually believe this would be a decently high scoring game, believe it or not, because I, Seattle really can't stop the run. They're not very good against it. So I think Tampa Bay should be able to get their run game going more than they have in the past couple of weeks. But Gino's been uber efficient. I am he, he's turned into the black Drew Brees this, this season, to be honest with you. It's been very impressive. I wish... I could compliment him more and appreciate it more, but he plays in my division, plays your first Seattle, one of my most hated teams, so it's unfortunate. But Geno's been amazing. Yeah, th- honestly, this offense as a whole has been amazing in my opinion. You know, they're the 11th-ranked offense in the league. Going into the year, I would have told you probably bottom bottom of the league, 20th at most, because this offensive line's not great, but they get it done. They've yeah, actually been playing Walker very well up. for the yeah for the talent it's they very, have on that line. They've been playing very well. It's very efficient, and they're putting up almost twenty-seven points per game, giving up around twenty-four. But the fact they're scoring almost four touchdowns a game that that's pretty impressive with me with uh with how this team looked in the off season. Yep. And then so we got both we both got Seattle, and then. We'll move on to the 1 o'clock games. We'll start off Minnesota versus Buffalo. Shout out to all the betters that were able to get Minnesota at plus 7.5 when this line opened up. I wish you all the best of luck. Um, as a new Josh Allen fantasy owner, this kills me. 
Uh, it's very unfortunate that this happened the week after I traded for him. Um, they're taking the injury. He's only going to miss a week, hopefully. Uh, that's what they said, Max, probably. It's looking like he's not going to play. The line keeps moving down. It's at minus three and a half right now for Buffalo. This game is in Buffalo. This defense is banged up. They're not going to have Jordan Poirier. Uh, Gregory Rosso, or yeah, Rosso is out. They got a lot of a lot of injuries on the defense. And their offense has, you know, early in the season when they were doing the short passing game and they were spreading the ball around, this offense looked fantastic, looked unstoppable. Feel like after that Pittsburgh game and Josh Allen airing the ball out very easily against a very banged up secondary, they've gotten away from what made this offense unstoppable, and we saw it in the Jets game. Now, the Jets are very good defense. They're very underrated. People need to give them their respect. The Jets are playing phenomenal. They're actually a very good football team, and if they had elite quarterback play, we might be talking about them as Super Bowl contenders, for being honest. If Brees Hall was healthy and they had an elite quarterback, the Jets may be Super Bowl contenders. And that's with subpar offensive line play. Um, But Buffalo, I mean, with Case Keenum, I can't. I can't take him with Case Keenum. Now, if the defense was fully healthy, I'd take Buffalo to win this game. But it's not, so I'm going to take Minnesota. But Minnesota in a close one. Listen, you know, this Josh Allen injury, this could be way more serious than people are saying, I feel like. Um, elbow injuries are funny. I, I was watching, reading a couple things where, yeah, he, was, he saw he was hurt and he was able to throw the ball deep in that game still, so it must have been fine. Once once the tendons cool down, it's hard to get that power back. You really got to yeah, warm your arm up. It's it's not pretty. Stephon Diggs says, you know, Case Keenum plays like Josh Allen. I don't know what Case Keenum games he's watched. I, I just don't, I don't hey, get they it. hooked up for the Minnesota Miracle, man. That's his guy. Yeah, I, I get that, but I I was like, wow, Stefan, that's a that's a bold comparison right there. But you know, it's a one o'clock game. Kirk Cousins thrives in those one o'clock games. I I'm kind of shocked Minnesota with their what they're seven and one now. Listen, last year they lost a lot of close games and they found ways to lose. It's been the opposite side yeah. of the coin this year. They found ways to win these close games. I don't think they. I actually don't think they're a better team than they were last year. I think they're the same team. I think they've just been way luckier this year. Oh, well, I was about to say their offense. Their offense is very mediocre. Like it gets the job done, but nothing stands out to me in this offense. And then yeah, the it's de- been solid. It, it has been solid, but the defense is the defense is one of the worst in the leagues. But they yeah. they get it done somehow. I mean they're giving up twenty points a game. But I I'm also I'm taking Minnesota in this one if um it, it's looking like Josh Allen won't play. I don't think they've ruled him out yet. But I'm pretty sure within the, the next got, day. Uh, I got breaking news for you. Okay. Uh just went on Reddit just because um <clears throat> One of the beat writers for Buffalo Bills, she reports for ESPN, uh, Elena Gettensburg, just said that Josh Allen was seen wearing a practice jersey um, today. Obviously, quarterbacks don't need a lot of practice time during the week, and Sean McDermott has said that Friday would be an indicator of if he could play or not. Like I said, this injury is looking like a one-week injury. Uh, luckily, because he had a UCL injury, his I think it was his rookie year, his, yeah, his third, second year, he missed a month. Year. Um, they said it's way less severe than that, and that it's just a slight sprain, and it's something it's just pain management pretty much. But like you said, after that adrenaline stops and that swelling sets in, it is going to be tough for him to get ramped up. And if you're Buffalo, would you rather be seven and two, risking Josh Allen getting hurt worse? Or would you rather be six and three, and you gave him a week off, and he's going into the, the next week, we'll say ninety percent healthy instead of eighty percent healthy? 
honestly, I'd go the six and three because they're going to make the playoffs it, either way. It, exactly. You're in a, you know, I get that the Jets are close. If the Jets win and Miami, whatever it has to happen there, there could be like a three way tie in the division, right? It, close to it. I mean, Miami, the Jets, and Buffalo are all right there. So I get right behind them one. too. Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> New England is close. They're right yeah, there, right? Figure it out. Yeah, They're right there. Uh, <laughs> if uh, but Josh Allen gets back, you know, you're fine. You're making the playoffs yeah. with Josh Allen. But I'll I'll put a stipulation on it. If they're gonna play Josh Allen this week, I'll take Buffalo at home. I think they'll manage it. He's also he opens up the run game a ton, and it's not an injury where if he gets hit, it's gonna hurt him worse. It's gonna have to be like how he got hit in that Jets game. It's going to have to bend the elbow some way, but if he just takes a hit on the ground, he should be fine, right? Um, so if Josh Allen plays, I'll take Buffalo, but I don't think he's going to play, so I'm going to take uh, take Minnesota. I'm also going Minnesota. I think either way, <clears throat> expect Naheem Hines to get involved this week. Last week, you know, first week with the team, not really involved. I think that's a huge addition for this Buffalo team just because uh, Devin Singletary is not the answer. James Cook is still young, so you got some more time of him. But Naheem Himes, he opens up that pass game even more, in my opinion. Well, that's what I was going to say. I think Devin Singletary is fine as a down-the-hill, you know, short yardage guy. But you get him in the pass game, and he's just not doing a whole yeah. lot. Naheem Himes, he can do a lot out of the backfield in the pass game. And this, if Josh Allen does play, I do expect him to be very, very involved. I mean, either way, Case Keenum's going to check the ball down too, but especially with Josh Allen – I don't think they're going to let him air it out. Not no, very much. Yeah. They'll take their shots, but it's not going to be like the Pittsburgh game. Yeah. Because we know this Minnesota defense hasn't been great against wide receivers. Patrick Peterson, he's old, okay? He, I, he's, I, I, yeah. he, he's playing better than he was last season. He's still got a little bit of juice left in the tank. But this would, if a fully healthy Josh Allen was playing, this would be a game where Min- or Buffalo would be trying to run it up. Yeah. And then we got Detroit versus Chicago. Oh, boy. Holy heavens. They figured it out, Tommy. They figured it out. Matt Eberflus, listen, listen, listen. I drafted Justin Fields in fantasy off of one thing RGC, RG3 said. Swear to God. I, RG3 said before the season, he said they have made this offense to Justin Fields' strengths. They're rolling the pocket. They're getting him mobile, and they're getting him designed runs. Tommy, you know I love mediocre quarterbacks. They're my favorite type of quarterback. That's all best, I've ever known in my life. Best quarterbacks. You know one of my favorite coaches in the NFL is Kevin Stefanski. So I heard, roll the pocket out. Get him mobile. Play action shots. I thought, oh my goodness, with Justin Fields' legs? This is phenomenal. He's going to be a fantasy gold mine. He'll actually develop, and he might actually be really good at quarterback in real life, too. First six weeks of the season? 20 Dumpster passes. juice. Dumpster fire. Absolute garbage. Absolutely abysmal play from Chicago. I apologize to the city of Chicago. Y'all have every right to be excited now. Justin Fields is developing, and he's turning into an e- I won't say elite. A very I'm, good quarterback before our eyes. I think there's the, potential for eliteness. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The way he uses his legs. He just had 178 rushing yards. They're getting him out of the pocket. They're not telling him to do a three-step drop back and try to climb it. First off, there's no space in the pocket for him to climb because your offensive line is me and Tommy. It's awful. It's It's... <laughs> I mean, going into the year, it sounds like you were bamboozled, run amok, led astray from RG3. Uh, flat out deceived. And now Justin flat Fields to. is putting you on his back. He Listen, he's been phenomenal. The Chicago offense actually looks like they have a plan. I love the trade for Chase Claypool. It's an overpay, yes. But go look at the free agent wide receivers that are out there. There's none. It's Juju. It's Juju smith <sighs> Do you want to give Juju a hundred million dollars? No, not even. No, close. no, one, no one, does. one does. He's okay. He's a solid wide receiver. He's not a one. I don't think Chase Claypool's a one. I don't think Mooney is a one. But you know what? Go draft Jordan Addison. Go draft Quinn Johnson. And you're looking at a hell 
of a wide receiver core. You've got $100 million in cap space. You've already got a running back. Khalil Herbert is a good running back. We see it. Get him, draft somebody in the fourth, fifth round to be the backup. Spend all your money on the offensive line and the defense. Chicago, you might have a team. There's a chance. I love what they've done the past couple weeks. I love it. It's it's one of the most exciting things to watch in the NFL. A system actually developing their quarterback properly. It's incredible. It's one of the best things to watch in the NFL. People are ready to write Justin Fields off, and I hate when we call quarterbacks bust in their first, second year. Listen, Not everyone's going to be Josh Allen in their fourth year. I get that. Exactly. But give them three years, at least, to develop. I'm taking Chicago. I'm riding with Chicago. Uh, Dan Campbell's going to be upset. But um, you hit everything on the head, really, for Justin Fields. You know, going into that draft, I I was hoping he fell to 15. I, I You remember that draft night vividly. Yeah, yeah because yes, I, you, I do. Because you got your boy Trey Lance, and I I wasn't sold on Mac Jones yet. Because you, you made it sound like for months, oh, my God, San Fran's drafted Mac Jones. I was – I was hoping Fields fell. I mean, he's looking just like what we saw at Ohio State the past three games, except evolved a little bit more. I The past three weeks, they've opened up the offense. They are just scoring and scoring. I mean, they lost the last two weeks, but they put up 32 points, 29 points the week before that, and they put up around 30 points against New England. I tried to block that week out, but it happened. This is – Actually, going to be one of the best games of this week if the weather is good. I don't know what the weather looks like in Chicago Probably but around windy. this time of year. It's usually pretty bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because Detroit, I mean, their offense, you know, they need a get right game. They kind of they've been scuffling. Chicago's defense, atrocious. They're awful. They're not very good. They're rebuilding for a reason. So Detroit should score. And Chicago, they've been running over everybody. Miami yeah. actually has a pretty decent run defense, and Justin Fields put up 180 yards on him. Obviously, a completely different style of run defense when you have to deal with a Justin Fields. They did good against Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, but a rushing yard is a rushing yard, and they gave up a lot of them. A whole ton of them. But Detroit, you know, they had a great win last week against Green Bay. That's probably going to be their best win of the year. That I mean, they got over the hump against Green Bay. That's what that game was. But DeAndre Swift, you know, he's not getting as much involved. He's still – I don't know if he's still 100% or not. Probably not. I I don't know how much of the energy is lingering on for him. But I, I just think Chicago is riding on too much momentum right now on, with this offense where I don't see them winning. I'm also going Chicago. I think the fans are going to be out in force, I'm going to be honest. I think after what they've seen the past couple of weeks, I think Bears fans are going to be in Soldier Field. They're always there. Chicago fans are great. Yeah. They support their teams through thick and thin. Um, this is going to be a very exciting game for Chicago fans, I feel. Shout well, out to Matt Eberflus. Shout out to Justin Fields. I'm glad y'all figured it out. Very happy for y'all. Keep, continue to improve and go into next year looking strong. Please They're chipping away because honestly, the NFL is better when the Bears are better. It's just how it's how it is. If Chicago teams are good, the sports are always better in every sport. Even yeah, even basketball. I, I know, I know for a fact it is for you. Um, fact. Before we move on, one thing that we didn't because we weren't on last week. Uh, T.J. Hawkinson traded to Minnesota. That that trade shocked me. It really did. You know, it. I don't really know why they did it. it I mean, it was definitely it, a shock yeah. to everybody. Um, but I thought it was fine for Detroit. They had a. They want to play around their wide receivers, Jamison Williams and Monra. That's fine. Uh, just get Swift involved, please. Just back. You know, right. they don't need on, Jay Hawkinson's production if they they use Swift and Jamal Williams and you know they've got enough weapons without Hawkinson. Fair enough, fair enough. And then we go Denver versus Tennessee in Tennessee. Coming off a bye week, can Russell Wilson figure out the recipe to a good offense? No. The Titans secondary has <laughs> been mediocre. Denver should be able to exploit that. 
But the thing is, Denver's run game is going to be non-existent in this game because Tennessee might have the best run defense in the NFL. Um, Derrick Henry back to being very king-like, very royal. Uh, his very his royal. highness, Derrick Henry, he's back. He's leading the league in rushing. And, you know, this is – Pat Sertain is the biggest weapon on Denver's secondary and their, their defense. It, Tennessee doesn't have to worry about that because they don't pass the ball. Uh, <laughs> so, and if it is, to tight ends. I'm going to take Tennessee. It's in Nashville. You know, the state of Tennessee is having some very good football happen recently. You know, I know they lost to Georgia, but hey, you know, there's that. life in Tennessee. Yeah. Life in Rocky Top. I'll take the Titans in what should be a pretty boring game, to be honest with you. I was about to say, this is probably going to be a boring game. You know, Denver, right now they have the second best defense in the league. If Russell Wilson was anything like he was in Seattle, this team would be would be a threat. But, yeah, they wouldn't have traded Bradley Chubb. Yeah, I was about to say, Bradley Chubb going in this defense, they're going to take a hit. Pass defense, run defense, it's both going to take a hit. Uh, Derrick Henry is going to be himself this week, I feel like. He might just run through this team. He almost did it. He, he basically did against Kansas City. I, I'm kind of shocked Kansas City walked away with a win in that game. You know, Tennessee had him real. Well, they – they were they were pretty close. They just, but, they just played too conservative, man. They played yeah, too conservative. Malik Willis ran Malik Willis thirty enough. yards backwards, and the rest is history. But I think they're back to their old ways. You know, Mike Vrabel is he's the only coach left from that huge twenty eighteen haul of new head coaches. Only one still is that team. I think uh, you, you're going to compete in games when you have him as head coach. You're always going to be Absolutely. in the hunt. I think he's just he, – he's your favorite coaches. Favorite, favorite coach. coach. Exactly. He's just – he's a, he's a man's man. You know, he gets the best out of his guys. They, they compete with him. He's what Dan Campbell thinks he is. <laughs> um, wow. Wow. Not, you didn't I'm have to do my boy I Dan st- dirty like that. I still I still love Dan Campbell, but That's he's, just, dirty he's Dan. killing me, man. There's there's no improvement from last year. I can't respect you that much. Well, he's got Jared Goff at QB. How much how much can you expect? Sean McVay made a, made a Super Bowl. Jared Goff. He did, and they put up three points on that Super Bowl. I, I didn't say they won it, <laughs> but they made it. <laughs> but um, I got Tennessee. You got Tennessee. Anything else you want to add for these two teams? Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, Jacksonville versus Kansas City. Two high-powered offenses colliding. Uh, Jacksonville, they finally got out of the hellish side of their schedule. This will be a good stretch to see if Trevor Lawrence can develop into a very good quarterback or if he's going to be a game manager for the rest of the season. Um, And for the Chiefs, their offense just keeps on humming, and they keep on doing Chief-like things, except for running the ball. They can't do that. Maybe they'll get it started against Jacksonville. I'll take Kansas City. I don't see Jacksonville winning this game, but I would like to see them put up a decent fight. Don't get blown out. Just put up a fight. I think it'll be a decent fight just because, you know, Dougie P likes to air that ball out. He'll he'll let Trevor Lawrence throw that thing. Um, But Patrick Mahomes, he put on a clinic last Sunday night. I believe it was like 445 yards. I mean – Honestly, I think this is the best version of Patrick Mahomes that we have seen in his career. I think he's the front runner for MVP right now. Uh, Kansas City, the second best offense in the league. They're putting up around 30 points per game. They're, they're getting it done without Tyreek Hill. And that was the big question. I think this team right now is the team to beat in the AFC. I, I know that Buffalo beat them earlier in the year and Indianapolis beat them earlier in the year. But I still think with how dominant they can look, this is the team you got to watch out for. As for Jacksonville, uh, since we didn't talk about it last week, trade for Calvin Ridley. I, I think it's a solid trade. It's a good trade. Do you have any thoughts on that? You got Christian Kirk locked up. You got Zay Jones locked up. And now you're adding Calvin Ridley. Uh, again, there's no free agent wide receivers outside of Juju, really. And his draft has been... 
<clears throat> classified as kind of a weaker wide receiver class. I mean, you look at Keishon Butte, he's not really doing a whole lot. The 2021 tape on him is amazing. He, you know, he looked like a very good wide receiver prospect, but he hasn't done anything this year. Uh, Jordan Addison got injured, and then you got JSN. He's been out the entire season. And Quentin Johnson is, you know, slowly but surely he's making his way up the wide receiver list, and a guy like Jalen Hyatt as well. So it's just kind of a mess in the draft as well. So I, I love this trade. Um, it's low risk, low reward. I feel like, especially with all the protections and stipulations they yeah. have on the the picks. You know, best case scenario, I think both teams win because Atlanta gets a decently high pick and Jacksonville could get a potential number one or at least a really good number two. Calvin Ridley, you know, he's he's a good wide receiver. He, he was you know, starting to break out, out in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, he's very solid. I I think this was a good trade just because they have a really good wide receiver room next year. You know, we talk about how Christian Kirk got overpaid, but even in Arizona, he was a good wide receiver. He was a great wide receiver, too, in my opinion. I mean, he's getting targets. Calvin Ridley, I think, could put up with amazing numbers as well. Zay Jones is there. Yeah, ETN. So they're surrounding Trevor Lawrence with weapons. So we're going to see how good Trevor Lawrence is next year for sure. That could be the make or break year. You never know. And then we got Cleveland versus Miami. This, I believe, You're taking Kansas City in that game, right? Yeah, I got Kansas City as well okay. in that game. I they're just just making sure. Yeah, they're, I just feel like there's no stopping them. They're they're gonna find a way to win. Yep. And then Cleveland, Miami. I believe this is uh, Brissett's last game. Before uh, uh, or is it two is... more? I think I think week thirteen. Week thirteen. Week okay. 13, Deshaun Cosby. I mean Deshaun yeah. Watson. I think he he comes back week thirteen against Houston. Houston, we have a problem, but um. I think this, is good. this could be a really good game. Yeah, depends on which Jacoby Brissett shows up. Yes. Um, Chicago gave the game plan, just get a Justin Fields and he can run for 180 yards and you'll be fine. They don't have that. They're going to have to rely on Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I think the Browns always find a way to get their run game started a little bit, unless you're playing the Patriots. <laughs> um, Miami, on the other hand, this, this offense – Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle are too dynamic for any offensive scheme to fail. That's what I've learned. Mike McDaniels, I think, is a very good coach. I think he's a very good coordinator. I think he can draw up a lot of really good plays. You saw 49ers offense kind of scuffle at the beginning of the season because he left and we were trying to figure out our run game. He's great at that. I just don't know if it's him or if it's just Tyree Kill or Jalen Waddle and Jalen Waddle because Two has been very accurate. I'll give him that. He put, you know, he throws a very catchable ball. He throws a, he's very good in, with anticipation. He can fit the the passes in tight windows. He's not throwing it deep. Okay, that's not happening. A lot of these are rack yards and yak yards, and that's fine. Because Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle are just that explosive, and I just. As long as Tua plays, I just don't see Miami losing a whole lot of games. And I do like Cleveland's defense a lot, but it's going to be a nice sunny day in Miami Gardens. I'll take the Dolphins. I'm um, I'm going Cleveland here. I think um, I, I'm just too big a fan of uh, Chubb. I really am. I just think he's going to find a way. They'll run through this team. I, I they don't have corners to keep up with both, but. Yeah, Denzel Ward is not he, he's not checking either of these yeah. guys and shutting them down. I mean he's fast, but he's he's not a shutdown corner. I think it's gonna be a very close game. I don't know what the final score is gonna be. But going back to your point about McDaniels, is it um to or uh Tyreek Hill and Waddle being dynamic or is it good coaching? I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah, same. I think um you know, they still don't have a great run game. The run game, I know they, it's it's Moster to lead back now. Um, they got rid of Edmonds in that deal to bring in Chubb, which that's a great addition to this defense because this defense is very lackluster. I even with Chubb, I do think it's kind of mediocre. They needed they needed pass rush to help that secondary, yeah. and I think Chubb will provide that for sure. And I, you know, they traded for Jeff Wilson as well. 
I think Miami could make a, a run in the playoffs. It just depends on how are teams going to scheme around shutting down this offense. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's tough. It was already, you saw in Kansas City. You yeah. Know, it was tough to shut down Kelsey in in Hill. And you started playing a lot of two deep safeties. You started taking away a lot of deep shots. You didn't want Kansas City to track race you pretty much. You didn't want them to boat race you. You wanted to get long, methodical drives. Well, Miami is kind of the same thing. Tua, all of his deep balls are underground. Okay, I hate every every listen, time. I, Tua, I'm a big Tua hater. I get it. I always bash him, but I do think Tua is a fine quarterback. I think he is perfectly fine. I think he's perfectly capable of winning a Super Bowl. To be honest with you, I think he's a good enough game manager for that. He throws with good anticipation. I would take him over Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo can get to the Super Bowl, get within ten minutes of winning it. I think Tua can do the same thing. Um. I don't trust Tua as much over the middle of the field as I do Jimmy, but he attacks the outside the numbers much better. But we'll see come come playoff time what happens. But it's not like Kansas City where exactly. you can give Travis Kelsey yeah. everything underneath because if you're you know if Hill's the guy that's going taking the top off the defense and you don't want him to you know hit these these shots down the field. I don't know if I want to give either of these ball, either of these guys, the ball underneath either, because they can take a three yard slant to the house. It's just a very tough defense to guard when you got, you know, it seems like eight guys out there that run a four two. Yeah, it, it'll be very interesting. I think, um, like you said, Mike McDaniel's is just speed kills. That's that's how I sum it up, and he he lives by that. Uh, anything else you want to add for these two teams? No. All right, we'll throw it to Houston versus the New York Giants. Yeah. I'm going back and forth between this game and another game for my America Loses Game of the Week. Um, I really hate to put noon games because there's just so many different options for America to watch at noon. But, I mean, good God. I I, I got to go. I, I'm going to hold off. Just because I don't want to disrespect the Giants being six and two, I have another America loses game. Oh yeah, we'll get um, to that one soon. Um, on to the Texans side. This game is in uh, MetLife, sadly. So shout out to everybody. Hope your knees and ankles are okay after this game. Don't um, let Damian Davis Pierce touch the field. Then Keep Davis Mills, healthy. General Mills, he's a game manager. He's not. A, he's actually, I think, regressed in his rookie season. To be honest, in terms of game managing. But Damian Pierce, he runs hard. He's a uh, he's an angry runner. His team is too one dimensional to beat the Giants, though. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna take the Giants. I think their defense can shut down the run. I'm not scared of Davis Mills beating me, and the Texans can't stop the run. And I think Saquon can carry this team to another dub. Yeah, I mean, this is a game that Giants should win. This is yeah. All you have to do is just. You can play mistake football and probably beat this team. Yeah. I'm, I just there's there's no one on this Houston defense that's gonna stop Saquon Barkley. Brandon Cooks is gonna play, but I don't think it really matters. I really don't. Uh, Pierce, I I don't see running through this defense. He'll get his touches, he'll get his yards, but I don't think uh, he'll have. I mean, he had a great game against Philly. I mean, he was just running up and down yeah. the field. I don't think we see another thing like that this week. He, it's possible, but very, very unlikely for me. I'm also going Giants. It's just this is just an easy comeback game for the Giants. I, you know, they lost against Seattle. I believe they're coming off the bye week now. It's just it's a good uh, warm up, I'll say, for their next couple weeks. Yeah, and you get another week to get Wondell Robinson, the guy they drafted, and, you know, to get him involved, yeah. and the team should just look better all around. I hate to say that because I don't want to see the Giants be 7-2 and two with that roster, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean... Oh, yeah, well, we weren't here uh, week 9, so we didn't actually get to talk yeah. about it, but I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, we, we all picked the Giants to beat Seattle, hoping they would lose, and it worked. The reverse psychology paid off. It did. 
Gotta That's love how it. much we hate the New York Giants. Yes, I don't I actually mean, hate them. I just I, I don't I don't like seeing bad teams with good records. I hate them. I do. I'm gonna be honest. Well, you you know you got you got. I'm not, I I I hate Giants fans who act like they're the greatest thing in the NFL right now. They're not. But um, I mean they'll get exposed in the playoffs first round that wild card game. They'll get exposed if they make it. I mean Cowboys. I. Honestly, uh, I I can see Cowboys really? and um I can see all three of them making the playoffs. I really can. I guess it depends on it depends on what's going to happen out west. Um, None of them in the south are making it. Besides the division out, winner. Out, besides the division yeah. winner, yeah. It'll, I don't think, yeah. it'll be determined what happens out west with the Niners and the Rams and the Cardinals and all of those yeah. in Seattle, you know. The Birds. Yeah. Um the Bird Division. <laughs> Noah versus Pitt. I mean, this line is very fishy to me. Uh, the Saints are favored one and a half going into Pittsburgh. I know the Steelers' defense has been bad, but they're getting TJ Watt back. TJ Watt on 10 snaps can make a bigger impact than maybe any defensive player in the NFL. Yeah. I th- I'm going to take Pittsburgh because I. I don't like that one and a half line. I don't like the Saints being favored. I don't think they're very good. Now, Andy Dalton is fine. He can take advantage of bad defenses, but I actually don't think Pittsburgh's defense should be nearly as bad. You know, let's say T.J. Watt plays 50% of the snaps this week. Their defense is going to be a whole lot better. We saw how important T.J. Watt was to that defense. They're going to be a whole lot better. I'm going to take Pittsburgh. I look at these two teams, and it's just, I mean, Pittsburgh, they they just can get nothing going right now. Kenny Pickett, does, he doesn't look good. I mean, I get that he's a rookie, but two touchdowns, eight interceptions. I mean, no, I, they probably expected it to be around 50-50, but he's just not great. You know, they traded Claypool, but they still have a solid wide receiver room, in my opinion. Coming off a bye, I think Pickens yeah. will get involved a lot this week. Like you said, T.J. Watt's coming back. Uh, Najee Harris, they're saying his job might be in jeopardy. Personally, I don't see it. Yeah. I, I mean, neither of those guys are running the football, so I yeah. don't think it's. I don't think it's a running back issue. I think it's an offensive line issue. Exactly. I mean, we've we've said the past two years this offensive line is atrocious. Yeah. I mean, it's been awful for a while now. Probably the last three or four years. They just can't get anything going. New Orleans, I think they're kind of getting the ball rolling a little bit in a little bit better direction. They have the sixth best offense, eleventh uh, best defense. I think uh, I, I got to go New Orleans here. I think they'll find a way to get it done. I think uh, you know Alave's just been great. Kamara, great. Taysom Hill, he's a playmaker as well. There's just so many playmakers on this team, Jordan. They just mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to stop. Yeah, we love Taysom Hill here. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, a, I had to throw that one in there. Phenomenal football player. He's just so amazing. He's so like he he gets the nitty gritty done. I mean, all right, let's move he's on. He's a gym rat. We're, I, we're in the Legion Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, I the, the Raiders versus I'm a, the Colts. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't write anything for this game because I I don't know what's going on. This is America's loses game. Yeah, America loses game of the week. Sam Ellinger taking on. The Las Vegas Devontae Adams. Um, Hunter Renfro's on IR. Darren Waller's on IR. Doesn't matter. They weren't getting the ball anyway. They got rid of Jonathan Abraham. Um, yeah, I mean, Derek Carr's going to target Devontae Adams 25 times. They're going to run Josh Jacobs 16 times. And the final score is probably going to be like 7-3. to three. Um, <laughs> The Colts are bad. They have Jeff they're, Saturday. They're, they're atrocious. They got a morale, the morale booster in Jeff Saturday. Shout out to him. I'm glad he got a head coaching job. He doesn't deserve it at all. But, hey, you know, Colts guys, you know, really, really embraces the Colts brand of football. He's, you know, O-line guy. He's not going to be – we're not going for it on fourth down. We're, we're not going for two. We're, this is going to be a field goal only game for the Colts because we know they're not putting the ball in the end zone. Not even Give me close. Vegas. 
I'll take Vegas, but I expect the Colts to look better just because it's Jeff Saturday's first game, and I think he'll rally the troops a little bit. Uh, he'll get that offensive line is, looking a little better. <laughs> it's I mean, hard it's to be gonna, as bad as they were. Yeah. But, you know, what's this game mean if Vegas does win? They're 3-6. and six. This is a useless – this is the most pointless game on the schedule. This is why it's America's loses game of the week. It's not – neither of these teams are exciting. And I'm only taking Vegas because I think their offense is a little bit better. Just a little bit better than not the Not by much. Not and by Josh much Daniels, at all somehow. I mean – He's a good coordinator. Out, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> We'll leave it at that. Uh, head coaching's not for you, Josh. Go back to offensive coordinating. They'll take you back in New England. Um, I- I'm also going to Vegas because they have Devontae Adams. That's that's all I'll leave it at for them. I, I-, I don't want to talk about this game anymore. Uh, anything else you want to add? No. All right. We got uh, Dallas versus Green Bay, 425 game. Green Bay is lost. <laughs> they avoided a major injury with Aaron Jones. It looks like he's probably going to play this week. Um, so that's lucky, lucky for them. They lost Romeo Dobbs. Um, the rest of their team has just been banged up. Alan Lazard still banged up. Aaron Rodgers probably going to target Alan Lazard exclusively in this game, I would assume. From the Cowboys side, Zeke should be back. Him and Pollard, one of the, you know, one of the best one-two punches just because Zeke is so good in short yardage and getting in the end zone, and Pollard does everything else better, <laughs> um, except for pass pro. Yeah, Zeke is a phenomenal pass pro back still. The Cowboys are getting it rolling a little bit. They're getting it going, and, you know, just like last year, people are calling them Super Bowl contenders. We'll see. Uh, if they play Daddy Shanahan in the playoffs again, uh, probably not. But <laughs> this game is in Lambeau. Can the Packers protect home field? Probably not. I'll take Dallas. I This Dallas team's coming off a bye. I'm glad you brought up Zeke and Pollard. Like you said, probably the best one-two combo for running backs. I, I honestly think by the end of the year, if Zeke plays the rest of the year, they probably could both be a 1,000-1,000 guys. I wouldn't be surprised. We'll see, we'll see what Zeke's needs look yeah. like. Hey, they're they're crunching as we speak right now. You can hear it all the way in New York. But um, you know, Dak he hasn't looked great since coming back. Yeah, I know he's airing the ball out a little bit in Chicago. He just he doesn't make good decisions with the ball. He's not accurate. I'm not sold on Dak Prescott. I don't think he leads this team very far. But there's talks of Odell Beckham signing with Dallas. If that happens, I think. There's there's both positive and negatives. Positive, you get another playmaker. Because C.D. Lamb right now, he's not a wide receiver one. They should have never traded Mari Cooper. They wouldn't be well, in this the situation. Thing, you know, you, yeah, Mari Cooper's probably better than OBJ, and this yeah. point in his career is sad. It, it doesn't yeah. – OBJ going to Dallas doesn't really change that team for me, to be honest. I think they're the, they stay the exact same rank. I think, you know – the negative, if he is on this team, you're not going to be able to run the ball as much because you're going to be trying to air the ball out a little bit more. And I think they got a good thing going with Pollard and Zeke. This is what you have to run your offense through. I There's just the wide receiver room's not that good. I don't think Dak is that good to, in high-pressure situations. I think if you want to be competitive, you have to rely on the run game. That's that's their bread and butter. It always has been. Going back to the nineties, yeah. it's always has been. I mean, that's how they they Not created wrong. dynasty. I'm I'm also going Dallas in this one just because their defense is so it, it's very dominant in some of these games. Micah Parsons is putting on a show for defensive player of the year. I mean, he's just all around the field, getting in the backfield, running down running backs. I that was a great uh, trade back for him. They probably could have drafted him where they were, but they knew Philly needed a receiver. I, my opinion, that was one of the best trades for each team on draft night. I think yeah. uh, both of them walked away with a win there. But give me Dallas. You know they're only giving up 16 points in a game, and Aaron Rodgers is not what Aaron Rodgers was. I mean, we've I seen mean, him. 
It's the lack of weapons. Even if Aaron Rodgers was Aaron Rodgers, what? <sighs> He's got Sammy Watkins. I mean, no, well, you're not winning with these receivers. Well, why why are you replacing Devontae Adams with Sammy Watkins? As a general manager, like, you've seen Sammy Watkins somewhat play. He's not on the field most seasons, and you decided, yeah, that's going to help our team. The guy was probably going to play, what, seven, eight games? Listen, Alan Lazard is okay. He's probably a fine wide receiver three on most teams. And Romeo Dobbs could develop into a guy, you know, he's not this season, maybe not even next season, he's, you know, but he has talent. I can definitely see it. Christian Watson can't catch. He looks like a spitting image of Marquez Valdez Gantley. It looks like a one for one replacement, to be honest. Now, he's got uber potential. He could definitely develop into a phenomenal wide receiver. He's got all the skills that you want. He's tall, good catch radius, great speed. But he doesn't run very good. He doesn't run good routes at all, actually, right now. He can't catch. He's not creating any separation outside of burning people. It's MVS. It's a worse MVS at that. Robert wrong. Tunyon's still coming off of that. Mercedes Lewis, I mean, okay, really. Yeah. Like that's. I'm relying on him to get two catches a game. And then A.J. Dillon is not being involved because they want Aaron Jones out there because he's just the more dynamic player, and this offense is lacking so much they have to have Aaron Jones on the field. They can't afford to go these short yardage packages and, you know, run A.J. Dillon. He's just not dynamic enough, and they don't have enough playmakers outside of him to to have him on the field more than Aaron Jones or even in a 50-50 split. So, even, like I said, even if Rodgers is playing at an MVP level, this, this offense is devoid of any talent outside the quarterback position and running back position. Do you pack it in if you're green back? No, you got to keep going. There's no packing it in. What are you going to do? Trade Aaron Rodgers? And what's I mean, what's the point? If he leaves this off season, fine. If you trade him in this off season, fine. But you're going to have to roll with what you got this this season. I uh, I'm gonna be honest. I I knew that the offense was going to take a hit. I didn't think it was going to take this much of a hit. This is this has been awful. Yeah, I mean we're talking Raiders Raiders Colts level awful. Yeah. Bamboozlement at its finest. And we'll, we'll move on, though. Arizona versus the Rams. Rematch from, I believe, week two. Kyler Murray's up in the air because of a hamstring injury. I'm going to be honest, even if he didn't play, I might still take Arizona. They can't stop wide receivers, but they only have to stop one. And it doesn't matter if he gets 200 yards. He's the only offensive threat on the other team. Matt Stafford's playing like boo-boo. Uh, they say Kyron Williams is going to start this week. Listen, I'm a huge Kyron fan. Came from Notre Dame. He's nothing more than a situational back. He's really good in pass pro. He's probably a good receiving back. I don't see him being a difference maker. Tyler Higby, MIA. Allen Robinson, waste of money. Give me Arizona. And I don't actually think it'll be close. I, I'm up in the air on this one because, you know, Rams Rams beat them last time, pretty dominant. You know, it it wasn't it wasn't a close game. I know that Arizona was getting some garbage time points and they wasted like nine minutes on the clock in the fourth quarter for one touchdown. But the big difference in that game, they didn't have DeAndre Hopkins. Nope. And DeAndre Hopkins has been DeAndre Hopkins. He's came back and looked just as good. If Kyler Murray plays, give me Arizona. If he doesn't, I'm taking the Rams. I just think um, I, people are figuring out the Rams now. The, the offensive line is terrible. They just have to get to Stafford. He's always been a gunslinger, so it's they're going to force some turnovers. And... We got the Sunday night. This game got flexed into Sunday night football. You want to take it away? Oh, how glorious it is. San Francisco. We're at home. We're in Santa Clara, California. So it's going to be a nice, clear night. Of hard nose pounding the rock football against the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are giving up 5.7 yards a carry. They just lost 
their number one run-stopping defensive tackle. The defensive tackle they are left with is Sebastian Joseph Day. Tommy, he leads the league in missed tackles from the defensive tackle position. Drew Tranquil leads the league in missed tackles from the linebacker position. The Chargers can't stop the run. The San Francisco 49ers, hey, they got themselves a weapon in the backfield. He, he was coming off the bye. He's coming off a phenomenal game against the Rams. Christian McCaffrey. They're getting Debo back. Brandon Ayuk is playing amazing. Kittle is finally healthy. The offensive line is healthy. The entire offense for the first time all season is healthy. And we're playing the Los Angeles. We have no fans in SoFi Chargers. The defense is hurt. The Chargers probably will be able to put up points if Brandon Staley brings a decent playbook to the game. I won't bet against Justin Herbert to keep the game close. But San Francisco is going to run wild all over the Chargers. Give them San Fran. Fran. Yep, give them San Fran. Well, I mean, they added McCaffrey to this offense, and I think this could be the team to beat in the NFC. I really do, once I get the ball rolling. They already got the ball rolling. I mean, McCaffrey threw for a touchdown, caught a touchdown, and ran for a touchdown all in one game. He's Kyle Shanahan's perfect uh, project, I'll say. Yeah. This he's is what, yeah. This is yeah. He is a prodigy, you know. He's he went to Stanford. He's back home basically. <laughs> uh, the Niners are the only team I've ever seen in NFL history to have two home stadiums for about four games. Yes, Levi South. We love it. I mean, even if they were away, they they pack them in in this game. Uh, give me San Fran. You know this. They're they're getting it together. They really are. They could make a huge run. I, I know they have Jimmy G, but check down you know Master. What's scary. Hey, Austin Eckler is the only weapon to worry about. Yeah. It's looking like Keenan Allen is not going to play. Mike Williams isn't going to play. You got Austin Eckler, Gerald Everett, both guys who are primarily going to be covered by linebackers. 49ers happen to have the best linebacker core in the NFL. This is just a ter- – the Chargers match up terribly against the 49ers. A team that can't stop the run against the best run caller in the NFL. If we had Mike McDaniels, we might break the single-game rushing yard record. Y'all probably game. still I'm could. I'm going to be honest. You, you probably still could. Uh, the- <sighs> They're going to keep it close. I think Justin Herbert is going to make some plays that only Justin Herbert can make. But if if this – it will shock me if San Francisco loses this game. I will be heartbroken. Do you understand? I looked at our schedule, and I didn't really – I knew we played the Chargers this season. I didn't know it was at home Sunday night after our bye. Well, after they, I saw that last week. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be a Sunday I've, night, I thought. I've been looking forward to this game for two weeks. If we lose this, I'm going to be heartbroken. Heart, bro. It'll be like losing the Super Bowl. I'm expecting a blow. Whoa, 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 whoa. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get so down after. I mean, okay, listen, it's not like losing the Super yeah. Bowl, but it'll be, it'll be, I'll be losing a very tough game because I, I'm expecting us to win. I'm expect, I keep on saying, I just said blowout. I expect us to win dominantly. I should say they may score some points, but dominance. I'm expecting dominance. If our defense was fully healthy, I would say blowout. But Fair enough. we're not fully healthy. I'm I'm not going to jinx you like you jinxed uh, Monday Night Football a couple weeks ago. I'll just leave it. San Fran wins. Um, <laughs> I, I, I won't. I wouldn't do that to you. Um, anything else you want to add about your 49ers? I'm so excited for this game. Uh, I, it's going to be I'm a good. I'm so one. excited. We good. First one. off, I love watching Justin Herbert play, so I get to watch one of my favorite quarterbacks play in my favorite team. But also, I, I I get to watch a very bad defense play my favorite team. That's right. And uh, we got Washington versus Philly to cap things off this week. Uh, Tommy, 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 Tommy. I got a call. Listen, uh, you know, I couldn't – listen, I'm going to be honest. I was working on a lawsuit last week. Oh. That's why I, that's why I couldn't show up. Um, I got a call. Better, some suspicious stuff was, better was going call Jordan. on. 
Yeah, and you know, I listen. I called Dan Snyder. We had a conversation. Ah, um, you know, he said he's gonna sell the team for me. I was like, all right, that's cool. The Washington Criminals versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, <laughs> the Commanders are a mess. It starts from all the way at the top to all the way at the bottom. They're a mess organization wide. This offense is stinky, stinky poo poo. This defense mediocre. The front office criminals. The executives criminals. I mean, this is this is Washington corruption at its best. This is D.C. corruption. They fit right in with the government. It makes sense they play in D.C. <laughs> the Eagles are eight and zero, four and zero. They took what they learned from the White House and just added it to the football team. <laughs> it's genius. <laughs> Eagles are 4 at home, 8 and 0 overall. They're favored by 11. They got the fo, fo, fo. 11. Listen, I don't know if it'll be 11. I you know, I think Washington has moved the ball better with Taylor Heineke, at least Somehow. more consistently. Um, well, we know how. Yeah, we know. I mean, I... okay, we, we, we know how. <laughs> Taylor Heineke is no convict, okay? He's playing with passion and he plays the game the right way. He's All a right? good man. You leave him yeah. out of this, Washington. Don't corrupt him. Uh, Terry, I'm I'm not sure if your contract's valid. I'm be honest. I don't know. Get out of there. You know, they paid you. I don't know if they had the money to pay you. I don't know what's going on. The fraud. They're saying corruption. They're saying a shadow operation. The NFL's covering something up. Craziness. It's just best if you retire and then come to San Francisco. Just come on over you here. Have enough we'll in take San care Fran- of you. You have enough in San Francisco, <laughs> all right? He's going to New England, all right? All right, this, all right, we'll let you have it. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Philly, I'm going to take Philly. Uh, I think it'll be closer than 11. Um, I think the commanders will, I mean, criminals will show up and they'll do something to, <laughs> to, uh, they'll play some prison ball. At least ball. not get, not, not get blown out. Yeah. They'll play the penal league ball. I mean, I didn't uh, know the longest they, yard was going to be a live action this Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but Philadelphia has been dominant overall. Defense and offense. Their run game is immaculate, and they're giving up 17 points a game. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous how dominant their defense has been. The the criminals, you know, I think they'll cover the spread. I'll give them that, but they're gonna lose. Last time it was a blowout. I don't think it's a blowout this time. I think Taylor Heineke can keep it somewhat in distance of respectable. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Philly, third best offense in the league, third best defense in the league. They're one of the healthiest teams in the league. I, they're probably gonna, they're probably favorites for the rest of the rest of the year in every game. This is not their trap game, though. I don't see them going undefeated, but this is not their trap game. I'm taking Philly. You know, look at their schedule. We're gonna say they win this game and say they're nine and zero. They've got the Colts. They yeah, at, they'll be, at yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. They, they oh wow, the Colts. wow, that's scary. And Green Bay. Okay. This is the game I I might pick them to lose. Tennessee. They're in Philly, but the Titans stopped the run. Yes. And I honestly think the way you're going to be able to beat Philly is making Jalen Hurts throw the ball. Although he's been fantastic. But you got to force them into turnovers. And you're not – him throwing the ball 24, 25 times, you're not going to force any turnovers with that. He's going to need a game where he has to go out there and put the team on his back. I think Tennessee could force that game. But they'll come into that game favored for sure. Um, then they've got the Giants. Yeah. The Giants have played everyone tough this year, but um, – the Yeah, no, I'm taking Philly no matter what. Then you got the Bears – Listen, I just keep praises on their the way they're developing their offense. Their defense is still atrocious. And the Cowboys again, I mean that listen, the Cowboys probably the second best team to try to beat them other than the Titans. Maybe actually I'll give the I'll give the Cowboys the edge because they have a better offense. The Saints, I'm taking Philly over the Saints. And then you've got the Giants again. They have two games that could be close. Two that Looking at it from afar, look like close games. I don't think they're going to go undefeated. They'll probably drop one of these games or saying they should win easily. It's tough to go undefeated. But two, three losses max, I mean, no one saw this coming. Everyone knew Jalen would develop. No one saw this coming. 
came out of left field. I, I do think, like you said, Dallas, Tennessee, top two. But I wouldn't be surprised if – I think Green Bay could do it. I think it's possible just because of I just the don't pedigree. Think Green Bay has the weapons. I think because the of the pedigree Slay of the and, team. Well, yeah. I think. But Darius Slay and James Bradbury, I mean, you look you, – if you're those two and you look on your schedule and you have Alan Lazard coming in and he's the guy you got to check, you're probably like, oh, I'm going to wear flip-flops today. Like, Bold let's choice. Go. Bold choice is a corner. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, though. You're not wrong. Uh, we'll see, though. Only time will tell. Yeah, we absolutely. That. That's every game of the week. We got through week 10. Anything else uh, you want to add for week 10? I guess I can uh, tell the records. We weren't here yes. for, uh, for week 9. But week 8, Tommy, I went... Eleven and four. Okay. I'm fifty three and thirty three. Okay. You went ten and five. I you know, I'll take that. You I had a rough, uh, rough two weeks prior, so fifty two and thirty four. I finally passed you. What, uh, Adam went seven and seven and eight. It was rough. Twenty nine and twenty seven overall. What are uh, how much am I behind? One or two? One. One game. Oh, that's one a, game behind. Respectable. I finally passed you, though. Finally ahead. Uh, hey, it's not over yet. Adam's giving me. Hey, it's not. Uh, Adam's giving me his picks. I have them. We have. We, you know, we just heard our picks. So we gonna put something on this. Who 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 leads at the end of the year? What, what are we doing? A dollar? Something off the, the dollar menu at McDonald's? Doctor Pepper? What, what's, what's you, you need more Doctor Pepper. What do you Pepper? give me when I win? Oh, whoa! No, I don't. I'll get you a nice. New York Yankees championship banner you can hang in your room. When? Where? When are, when are we getting one of those? Oh, wait. You already have one. Never mind. Uh, well, I guess yeah. I can't get you one, though. Well, I'll we, get you a nice we, uh... mini San Francisco football. How about that? Oh, that's nice. I'll sign it. They'll say Tommy Twinkle. Oh, you'll, you'll sign it. <laughs> I'll sign it. <laughs> uh, yes. Very well known San Francisco 49ers player. Yes. Now, what, what would I get if I won? A firm handshake. I'll take that. I'll take that. You're going to shake my hand through a computer? I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. I want to be there for that. But um, I, I think that's it for this week. Anything else you want to add? No, we we're, we're chilling. We, we mopping, you know? Put that on. You know, that's all we have for today. Uh, thank you for tuning in for another episode of The Locker Room. Uh, glad you listened. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.